Hey guys, it's Ben with Myers Woodshop along with Peter Romano. And we are going to do uh, 3D printing 101 in this video. So you can see I have a plethora of different 3D printers in front of us. They're all on, so you may hear the hum, especially of this one right here. It's pretty loud. We're going to go over the basics of 3D printing, what is 3D printing, how to get started, and uh, show you really how easy it is to start on these things when you have no idea what you're doing. Yeah. So hopefully we'll get you somewhat comfortable. You can choose from buying one of these. So let me go over some of the printers I have in front of us. We'll show you kind of a little bit of details of each one. I'll show you the basics of how they move, how they operate, and how to get things printed. And then we'll go over to the software side. That's easy as well. Once you know what you're doing, we'll walk you through a print from start to finish. So let's check out the printers individually. All right, so the first thing we're gonna look at here is called the Ender 3. This is made by Creality. The Ender 3 is fairly new within the last year. It is a sub $200 printer. I have done a video on that. It was the first printer I ever got. It was an unboxing. You can check that out on my other videos. But what we have here, you can see it's a simple shape. You have the base, which is down here. We have an LCD screen that gives us a readout of temperatures and movements over here, a knob to control it. We have a frame up here where things will, this will ride up and down to give us the height of what we print. And then we have a bed that goes in and out like this. Some printers don't have a movable bed. This move, the head of this moves around, but in all of my printers here, all of the beds move. That's more of your typical printer. Um, a lot of them are run on belts. There's a belt in here, and there's a belt down here. And then to go up and down on this one, it's not a belt, it's actually a lead screw that goes up and down. So sometimes they're belts, sometimes there are screws. Most of them are two belts and a lead screw. Then up here we have our filament. You can see I have white up here. There are different kinds of filament, but the general filament you're gonna use is called PLA. That stands for something scientific, poly something, and I don't know the rest. There are some other ones I'll go over in uh, a little bit later, but just know that that's your plastic that's coming out. It's gonna come down here to a motor that pushes the filament in and out. That's called an extruder. So it is all the time pushing filament in, pulling it out at different rates. That gives you uh, different amounts of filament coming out. It's gonna, this one falls through through a tube here, and then goes down here, and behind all these fans, we have the hot end. That actually melts the plastic at a certain degree. These like to use Celsius, and it will force it out. So I'm gonna go in here, and I'm just gonna control this, and I'm gonna move this tip up in the air so you can see how it moves. So this rail moves up and underneath we have a nozzle. Most general nozzles nowadays are at 0.4 and the plastic will come out of here when it's hot. So right now nothing is turned on hot. It's cool to the touch. I can touch all of these parts. After it starts printing, this part can go up to 280 degrees Celsius. Usually we print PLA at around 200. This bed can go from 60 to 100 Celsius. So these parts will get hot and you won't want to touch those. Um, on the sides, we have something called a limit switch. So when it is moving side to side, the way the machine knows it's not going to fall off or it knows its limits, is this switch that engages when it touches it. And you can hear a clicking. It has them on all accesses, that are axes. There's one down here, one up here, and one in the back. So it'll find those limits and know how far it can move the opposite way. So without these limits switches, it will just run forever and run right off the track and break. So there is a limit for each axis. So, the way it goes left and right here, that is the X axis, back and forward, that is the Y, 
The Z is going up and down, how far away you are from the bed, and the extruder is this motor here, how much it pushes the filament out. All of them come with an SD card slot. This one comes with a micro SD card slot. It came with an eight gig card. It also comes with a USB slot to connect directly to your computer. So you can run this off of your computer or you can run it off an SD card. You do the software part, you put it on your SD card and you can run it. There are some aftermarket ways to put it on to wirelessly, but that's more advanced and we won't cover that. All right, so I'm gonna show you some of the individual components that are really important. Right here, we have something called a stepper motor. Every axis has one of these, and this is driven by the printer, and it turns this little knob, and that runs your belt or your screw, and that's how everything moves. So stepper motors are number one. This makes everything move. Next, we have the power supply. This is a pretty generic power supply that comes with most every single one. Most of them have a fan. Some of them don't. There are better quality ones. Most of them have a switch on the side for country volts. I'm in the United States, so I'm running 115. If you're outside of there, you'll flip the switch, and I think this is 230. So make sure that this is switched to the right country before you turn your printer on and plug it in. And then finally, you're gonna have something like a motherboard, and here's what the Ender 3 motherboard looks like. We have a bunch of plugs where each limit switch will be plugged in, power for the machine to turn on and power for each part to get hot. We have something called the drivers. And typically when you think of a computer, you're thinking of a software driver, but on a printer, there is actually a physical driver and they're under these little heat sinks here. And some of these are cheap and they make the printer loud and some of them are expensive and they make it actually near silent. So I've upgraded this board to a silent board that had a higher uh, level of driver and that made this printer nearly silent outside of the fans turning. And then you can see we have our SD card slot and our USB slot and an LCD slot. So this is the brain of the printer. It's a lot like a computer, but this is in every single one. All right, so we're going to the whiteboard like old school classes. So we're gonna talk about first layer and bed leveling. So what's really important is the foundation of every print. And to get that foundation, you have the first time the printer head moves around and extrudes some filament and goes onto the bed. And if that layer isn't just perfect, the rest of the layers stacking up on that are not gonna print so well. So what's really important is getting the bed level. Now what you have when you level a bed. So imagine you're looking from the top down right here. And this is our bed of the printer. So we have these points, one, two, three, four, and five. So we have our printer head moving back and forth. This way, and then this way, and so forth when we print. Well, if this side is higher up in the air, and this side is lower down in the air, we're gonna have a big gloopy gloop come out, and it'll progressively get thinner, 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 and be just a little thin line or completely smashed and rub the bed. What we want is a consistent line of filament at the same height coming out all the way across. So what we need to do is level a bed. And in the software of our printer, we'll click on some buttons and it'll move the printer head to each corner. So it'll start at four and then it'll move to three and we'll do something and then it'll move to two and we'll do something and it'll move to one and we'll do something and then we'll move to five and we'll do something there. All right, so here we have the nozzle of the machine and our filament is coming through here and it's coming out the tip and this is our bed. So ideally when it comes out, we don't want it so far away from the bed like this that when it comes out, it doesn't touch the bed and it just squiggles around and you get nothing. And then the other way we could have it that we don't want, I'm gonna draw this kind of funky, is 
our printer, our, our printer head, the hot end, is so close to the bed that we just gr almost grind into it and it becomes so flat that it's uh, really wide and smushed. Ideally, we want to get it where we're perfectly away. When it comes out, it almost comes out the same thickness of the actual filament that we stuck into it. Kind of like that. So we just want just a tiny bit of squish, not over squished, and not to where it's not even touching the bed and we're just gonna squiggly and make spaghettis. So let's move over to the printer and I'll show you how the leveling works. All right, so over on our machine over here, on every machine, we're gonna go into your, we're gonna move our axis to where it homes down on the bottom left. Now, every machine is a little different, but somewhere you're gonna find auto home. So when we hit that, our machine found its limit over here. It found its limit in the back, and now it's gonna find the limit down here. And now once it's finished, it'll stop right down in the front left, typically. And we have these big wheels on the bottom of the bed on all four corners. If we turn it once away to the right, it'll make this bed go further down, so farther away from the head. If we turn it to the left, it'll make it go further up, so closer to the head. So now we gotta do the dance of getting all the corners um, just perfect. So we're gonna go back into our settings and somewhere it's gonna say level corners. It may not have a level corners and you have to do this manually by moving the head with it turned off, but mine has level corners, so we're gonna click level corners. It's gonna lift up and it's gonna to go to position one. That's where we get our piece of paper and we place it underneath and we wiggle it around and we have a little bit too much distance. So we'll turn this to the left until our paper gets caught. And once our paper gets caught, we turn it a little bit to the right so we just are catching the paper is where we want the, the head of the nozzle to the bed. And that paper is nearly the thickness we want the filament to come out at. So once we get that point, we're gonna click on the next point and it's gonna move over here. And we're gonna do the same thing over here. And we're just gonna go through all the points and once we get it done through once, we come back to here because lifting up these and lowering these could screw up the other points. So we're just gonna go round about four or five times till we know we're perfect. And once we're perfect, in the center, we got the filament and I've already done it on this one before this videoing. I knew it was perfect. We're done. We'll just hit back. We'll go back to auto home and now we're ready to print. All right, so once you're ready to print, you need something to print. So usually your SD card that comes with the machine, we're gonna plug it in. That'll come with some test files. So we'll plug it in, we'll come over to this. We'll go print, print from uh, SD card. We'll refresh the SD card. And I have a few things called cat, dog, pig, and it gives time, 2.5 hours, 3.5 hours, four hours. 3D printing is not fast, so if you want something immediate, 3D printing is not for you. Uh, if you want something fun, and you want to set it and forget it and come back and something comes out of nothing, this is it. So you'll just select your file, and once you select your file, the file will have the temperature it should go to, the bed temperature it should go to, and all of its parameters. Right now it says bed heating, it's going to heat the bed, then it's going to heat the nozzle, and then it's going to start printing. So that's it once you have the file. But where do you get the file? And how do you get it on the SD card? Let's take a look at the computer and show that off. All right, so first thing first, we need to find somewhere to get a file to print. So luckily the web is just inundated with a ton of files that I've already done for you. So I pulled up this site right here. You can see thingiverse.com, thingiverse. And it has a ton of things to just download. People make things, they upload the file, and then you just choose it. So I'm gonna show you what I found it is a uh, XYZ calibration cube. And that's what I printed out on all the printers 
I'll show you in a little bit. So you can see I searched XYZ thing, calibration tube cube, and there are a ton of just different files of cubes all over the place. So I just grabbed the first one I found up here. Uh, we'll click on that cube. We can see a 3D picture of it. We can see a little summary and the printer this person used and uh, the settings they used. And all we need to do is click download all files and that downloads a zip file that has the file that uh, we want in it. And I will use Windows 3D Viewer to show you it's right here. So this is actually on my computer. I opened up the file and we can see the underneath. We can see all the sides if we just rotate it with the, the mouse. So this is called a .stl, an STL. That's what about every file is in 3D printing. It's a bunch of triangles, actually. So you're looking for .stl files. Um, so if you can think about it and you type it into Thingiverse, let's say we want to get some Legos and we hit enter, uh, the pages literally just go on forever to where I can't even download them all. So you can find here's Batman, a Gatling gun, Stormtroopers. If you think it, it's here. It is pretty amazing. Another thing that I like to do is uh, look up some woodworking because I like to do woodworking and a lot of people make tools on here. Uh, some dovetail jigs, feather boards, you can print your own. And your 3D printer can basically pay for itself if you're looking at buying a bunch of woodworking tools or something like that nature. You print these for pennies on the dollar um, and print it out. So there is a, some other websites that I like to use. One is called cults3d.com. You can see this really cool army jeep. Now these feature some paid models. Thingiverse, every file on Thingiverse is free. You just click it and download it. Other websites, people want to get paid for their work, and Cults 3D is one of those. You can see how incredibly intricate this army jeep is. Some of these are free and some of these are not. Uh, this one is $14.34, but that took some time to model, I can tell you that. That's rather incredible. So Cults3D.com, that's another one. I'll put all these in the link in the description. Uh, and finally, my third favorite is my mini factory they have a lot of um 3d files as well again this is more of a paid tier people want to get paid for their work but some of these are really detailed and rather incredible so if you're getting beyond where you're just downloading anybody else's work and you want to start using your own there's a few programs to use my first recommendation is a program called tinkercad.com and we'll create a new design. This is made by Autodesk. You can see all of the designs I've made there are listed. It is on the internet. It is not a download offline. You have to be online, but this is rather easy. It works in basic shapes. So you'll look over on the right side and we have a bunch of shapes. So you can think of uh, just making um, things out of shapes. So if we want to make a box, we can just drag our box and then you can see how tall we want to make it. Maybe like that. And if we want to make the inside empty, we'll get a negative space box. We'll click it over here. We'll kind of do this. We'll look at it from the side. This is my, in no means a how to use Tinkercad kind of thing, but just a quick show you how to do it. I'm going to group these two things together. And now you can see, well, I didn't make a box. I made a, a slit uh, down a, a uh, rectangle. But anyways, that's how you start off on this. I'll probably do a how I use Tinkercad video in the future. This is really simple. It's completely free. It saves everything you do. And if you want to put this onto a printer, you'll click export. And it gives you some options here for 3D print. We can do dot object, OBJ, uh, GLTF, which I've never used, a dot STL, which is what I use 99% of the time. And if you happen to have a laser cutter like I do, you can actually create SVGs. 
uh, SVG, or you can use that SVG for uh, CNC. So uh, we like to click on STL, and it downloads it, and we can see, we'll discard my cube, and we can see there is the thing we just created in Tinkercad. So we're missing one step. Once we get the file we want, we need to slice it. We need to translate this file into something the printer understands. And in that case, we need something called a slicer. So I'm going to open up uh, some web pages that will give you some slicers. So the first one that I like to use is made by a company called Ultimaker that is called Cura. Uh, a lot of people like to use this. It's completely free. It works with a lot of printers, and they're already built in. And here's what Cura looks like. This is set for my Ender 3 printer. You can see I have all my printers listed here. I have to select different printers because different printers run differently. So if I'm going to do something for my Ender, I'll click on Ender. And you can see here's the bed of my Ender, and you can see how big I can print. So we'll open up. Let's open up the calibration cube, the XYZ cube. You can see how tiny it is. We'll zoom in. And that is the cube we made. So we need to run this through this program and slice it. So right here, you can see this blue button that says slice. If I click that, you can see a little processing bar. And it gives us a time, 32 minutes it'll take. It'll be 0 0.09 cents, 5 grams of the filament. So we know how much it's going to use and how much price it is. And once we sliced it, we can hit preview up top. And we can even zoom in a little closer. And you can see the layers. You see how the printer head will actually print all these little individual lines? Over here, we can drag this up and down, and you can see exactly how it'll print. So if we go down to one, that's where it starts. Remember, that's our uh, important first layer. And then we go up, and you can see the something called infill. This is the fill on the inside. So we can set this to 100% or 5%. It all depends on what we're printing. And you can see right up here on the top right, I have it set to 20%. And not everything prints at 100%. You're usually using maybe 15, 20 and then it prints the top, and there's our print. So all we'll do is we'll save this file to our uh, to anywhere we want, really. We'll, I'm going to save it to the desktop. And then all we need to do is get on the desktop and transfer that file over to our SD card. The file that it creates from this, you can see down below, it saved it as a .g code file. G code is meant uh, to send its strings of code that lets the printer know where to move and how to move and when to move. And so a .g code is the file that has been sliced and the printer is ready to print from. A .stl is a 3D model that needs to be sliced so the printer can understand it. Uh, one other service that is out there to use for a slicer is literally called Slicer with a 3. Um, I don't use this personally, but I like to use Cura, but that's another another one, and that is also free and can be used with many machines. And then, of course, I have a Prusa, so I use the Prusa Slicer, and it's actually based off of Slicer with a 3. And that looks, I'll show you right here, it looks like this. You can see this is my Prusa bed, and I can import in that cube file, the STL. You can see right there it is. And now I have to slice it. Remember, uh, slicing is telling the software what to do so the, the uh, printer can understand it. So I'll click Slice Now. And again, I can zoom in and see all the little zigzaggies that the printer will run. And I can drag up and down and see how it's going to print. You can see it's getting smaller. If I turn it on its side, you can see it's getting smaller. So it's going to print just like that. It gives us a print preview. And then I'll export that G code again as a file and I'll put it on the SD card and then print it from the computer. So that is the software base in a nutshell. It is a lot easier once you start playing around with this than it looks, of course, in this fast video. You can download all of this for free before you own a 3D printer to try to understand it. Uh, I suggest doing that, actually. So let's get back to the printers.
All right, so here's my big box of filament. Let's talk about it. What can you print and what kinds of filament can you print? The most common filament you're gonna print with is PLA. And that is something where a printer does not need to be encased. It is the on the lower end of the temperature ranges. You can really print it without a heated bed. We have one that doesn't have a heated bed and it prints and sticks to that. So that's your common PLA. I like to use something called Matter Hackers. They're really good for 3D printing stuff or Hatchbox PLA, um, Hatchbox brand. I find that on Amazon. Really, if it's not on Amazon and it's not Prime, I'm probably not gonna buy it. So Hatchbox has worked out really well. I like that uh, for my filament. Why is all my filament in Rubbermaid box? Because it's really important that moisture doesn't get into the filament. It will make it expand and when you're pushing it out through temperature and when temperature temperatures matter within five degrees Celsius, you don't want any moisture in there because it could throw the whole print off and wasting however many filament and however many hours of printing really stinks. So grab all the silica packets you find and all the stuff you buy, throw it in a Tupperware and then put all your, uh, put all your filament and store it in there. You want it in a dry, cool, moisture-free place. It becomes really brittle and can snap if it's uh, not stored in this. So I leave them in their plastic. They come with silica packets and vacuum sealed. I leave them in there until I'm ready to use it so I know it's fresh. Now, there are other kinds and there's some really cool kinds like this one you can see. It is wood filament and it feels different than the plastic and it prints really nice. So here's an example of this wood filament that prints. It is stainable and sandable, but there is about 70% plastic, 30% wood in here. But that is one of your options. You also, of course, have many thousands of colors. This one is a flexible filament. So it feels kind of uh, gummy when you touch it. And when it prints, it'll print a solid object, but you'll be able to flex it. Think of like a snake. That's uh, what I have in green right here. Not all printers can print this. The higher quality ones can. The Ender can. I printed some really good prints with that. You also have glow in the dark. I have glow in the dark green. There's glow in the dark blue. I'm sure there's more, but those are the only two I've seen. It is a PLA, but it glows in the dark. And that comes out really nice. Then we have something called PETG. That is a step up from PLA. It requires more heat and it does require a heated bed, but it also is a stronger print than PLA. Uh, it can withstand more heat and it still doesn't require any special modifications to your printer to be able to print. So PETG is also pretty good. Again, I have some matter hackers in that. Finally, we have something called ABS. ABS plastic is like what Legos are made out of. This needs a lot of heat and it needs a heated bed and it needs some sort of enclosure around your machine to keep the ambient temperature up or this stuff will uh, spread apart and not print well. This is finicky and more for professionals. So don't buy ABS or try ABS until you get PLA down. PLA is gonna be the new friendly uh, filament and ABS is when you're ready to go pro. So just know that that exists and uh, you probably won't use it until you know what you're doing and you won't need this video. So that's all we have for our filament on this one. There's many more videos out there uh, go in more detail, but again, this is just for beginner get to know 3D printing 101. All right, so let's take a look at the, all the 3D printers behind me and the similarity and differences between each one. All right, so we're gonna start right to left. So over here you can see a smaller 3D printer. There's two smaller 3D printers that I have. This one on the right, this is called the Snapmaker. It's version one, version two is coming out soon. This is special because snap, you can think you can snap this front piece off that is the 3D printer head and you can put on a laser head and a CNC head. It's an all-in-one. It is an $800 machine. However, it's a jack of all trades, master of none. So it prints fairly well. It's not perfect. Uh, it does have a smaller bed and you can only print as big as your bed is. It also has a smaller range up and sideways. So we're about this big on what we can print. Um, it does have a really nice screen 
It is a touch screen. It also is one of the only machines I have that uses lead screws in all of the axes. So it should be faster and more accurate without belts because belts can stretch or snap and you have to worry about getting them tight. But in this case, we don't have to worry about that. So that is the Snapmaker. All right, next we have the NWA 3D. This is aimed for schools. It's a very expensive printer and I don't understand why, to be honest with you, but it is the only one without a heated bed. This does not heat up. It is using all of the same parts that this big one, the Ender 3, is using. It's just in a small form factor. I believe they charge so much. This is about $700 uh, because the support is in the United States. It's actually here based in Arkansas. And I think it's a lifetime support. They're aimed at STEM centers. So we do have our nozzle up here. It is a belt driven machine. It does have a lead screw in the back to go up and down like almost all the rest of them do. But this axis, the Y and the X are on belts. It does have a screen. We have the SD card and the USB reader right here. Because it doesn't heat up, the only filament we can print out on this is PLA. So that's good for schools because um, you're learning and you don't have to worry about temperature and it's ease of use. However, your build volume is very small and you're limited with what you have and it is very expensive. All right, so moving over from the NWA, we've reached the Ender 3. This is finally, we're at like a real 3D printing printer. Uh, this is probably the most popular printer of 2018, 2019. It came out and it shattered the $200 mark. It's a sub $200 printer, depending on where you find it and sales. Uh, I have found it uh, for $169 on Banggood and Gearbest and it has been on Amazon for around $200. So what we have is a huge build volume. You can see the bed is much bigger than the other one. Also, we're about double the height and we have a heated bed down here. We have our heated nozzle, but all of these are run again on belts for the X and Y and we have our lead screw in the back for the Z. And we have our motherboard down here. We have our print screen that looks very familiar to all the printers. And we have to manually level the bed on this. Um, one great thing about it is it comes almost 60% pre-assembled. So there's very little to put together. And the part you do, they have a fairly decent amount of instructions to put it together. So this is the pro model right here. Over here, we have the regular model. Uh, the Pro is a little bit more expensive. I mistook that was about $239. The regular model is about uh, sub $200. Now, if you look at them side by side, they look very, very similar. There are a few differences. One is the power supply. I have modded this with a silent fan because it was very loud. The power supply over on the Pro is a brand name Meanwell, and this one is not. So uh, you also have a thicker rail in the front on the Pro and you have a thinner rail on the front for the bed on the non-Pro. Uh, the Pro comes with a magnetic bed. Um, so getting things off a bed is usually done with a spatula and you gotta scrape it. But if you have a magnetic bed that can come off, if you have a print that printed, you just pop this off and bend it and it'll just snap off. So I really like the magnetic beds. If that's an option. It's worked really well for me. Uh, we've replaced this one with a glass bed. We had some better luck with adhesion on this one. So it will work with the material it comes with from the factory. This was a from the factory deal, but there's some aftermarket bed uh, types that seem to work better than what comes from the factory. So we'll swing around back. All right, we're swinging back to the middle. We're at this green one because this is actually an Ender Pro, just like the one in the front. But I put that side by side because you can see they look really similar. They have the same kind of bed. They have this frame up top. They have a machine. The, the head moves in the center. They're priced at about the same amount of money and they have about the same build quality. Uh, they have the same build volume. The quality is pretty much the same. 
Um, but there is a whole lot more assembly with the T-bow than there is the Ender. Then finally, over on the end, we have, I like to say it's the cream of the crop. It's the Prusa, Prusa Research, the i3 MK3S. This is an $800 printer, and there's good reason for it. You can see it's very similar to the other printers. It is a little shorter, but it has a lot of features that the other ones don't. And you won't appreciate these features until you use one of those cheaper printers and then realize this one is basically automated for you. The cheaper printers, you're going to be tinkering. This printer, once you set it, you forget it, you never tinker with it again. So one thing we have is our motor is actually mounted right above the hot end. That allows us to get better prints because it's not running through a tube. Um, it's called a direct drive. We also have a near silent power supply, near silent machine period. When this is running, you can barely know that it's running in the uh, room. It does have a magnetic bed for easy uh, printer print takeoffs. It is running um, Marlin. It's a custom version Marlin of the software that everything else is running. Um, it does have an automatic filament sensor. So on the other ones, if you're printing and you're getting low, you have to watch and cause it'll just keep trying to print even if nothing, none of the filament's going through. This one has a sensor when it goes through and it's finished, it will stop the print and say unload and reload more filament. So you'll keep going. So that'll stop you from wasting a print. Another main feature of this is auto bed leveling. All the other ones have the knobs at the bottom and you have to put a piece of paper under and uh, shift those knobs up and down and they can come loose and you want to get it perfectly printed. This one doesn't have those. It's smart enough in its brain to where you set it and then it'll come over with a pin and it will uh, kind of feel around and know where the bed is. And if the bed is off a little bit, it will know that in the software and it will auto correct itself in the software when you're printing. So if it's lower over here and higher over here, it'll print lower and then as it moves over to the right, it'll raise the head and print a little higher. So it automatically does that. Those two features alone are what makes it so much more expensive. And those two features alone make me never wanna use anything but this printer. So that's what we have in my shop. That's what I print with. You can't go wrong with any of these. If you're interested in them, I'll leave links in the description below for every single one. So like I talked about with all these printers, getting that first print on the bed, stuck, perfect, is key. And a lot of the printers come with something called like a build tack type quality. Here's what the printer came with uh, for this ender up here. And that works well, but if we're going by the king of kings, it is this material right here. And this is a PEI sheet. It's specifically made to stick and not have to spray or glue stick or anything like that. Like on the glass, we use a lot of uh, spray, hairspray on it or some glue sticks to make it stick. Fortunately, we can buy this PEI sheet that the Prusa is using and put it on any of our printers. That's why you see a lot of my printers have this golden tone to it. It's a PEI sheet like this. This one costs about $17. It's got 3M glue on the back. We just peel that off. We peel off our old build tack on the bed of our printer. We put this on it and then we cut it to size. And then we nearly have a bed that's similar to our $800 printer. So I'll leave a link in the description below. This is on Amazon. Depending on the size you need, around $17 is what this will cost. And it is worth every penny. All right, so you can see after that test, all of the 3D printers have successfully printed 
a test cube. It's an XYZ test cube. It gives us uh, kind of like the, what the layers look like when it prints out. And um, we can measure these with calipers to make sure we're printing the right sizes. So here is all the things I was printing, these little XYZ cubes. So let's go through it. This is the Ender 3 Pro. I had a little black left in there, so disregard the color. But you can see the print quality is really good. This next one is black. This is going to be another Ender 3. Uh, this is just the Ender 3 period. You can see there's a little uh, change of direction right here. So it needs a little bit of fine tuning. This white one is going to be the Ender 3 Pro. And it print really well all around. Next one here. This is going to be the TiVo Tarantula. The camera will pick it up. This is uh, some of the sample filament. And usually that is pretty much garbage. So it printed really well for sample filament. So keep that in mind. Next one. This is going to be the little, the teeniest one. The uh, NWA. It prints really not bad uh, for what it is. This one is the Snap Maker. It's the one that can do laser and everything else. Picks up pretty well. We do have a void, some voids right here, which is interesting. Do the void right there as well. And this last one, this is the most expensive one. It's the Prusa. And you can see it's near mirror quality, flawless on every axis in the bottom. So that's the cube. So that'll give you a little bit of uh, what it looks like to print. All right, guys, I hope this video has helped you try to figure out what 3D printing is all about and if you could do it. And I believe me, if you don't think you can, you can. It's very simple. And once you actually get in front of you, you can start 3D printing. What's really cool is you make some useful things for around the home. With Tinkercad is the software I showed you. Real easy, it's free, it's online, and they use it in uh, elementary schools to start learning 3D models. Again, you have sites like Thingiverse that already have pre-made models, and all you do is search for what you're thinking about. It's probably already there. You download that file, you slice it, and you put it on here and click print. So if this has helped you out at all, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel. I'll have a lot more about 3D printing and a whole lot more about DIY, woodworking, lasers, CNC, and all that good stuff. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Happy printing.